Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to the Artist Next Level podcast. We are super happy to be with you in this episode. Today, we're going to reveal top secrets, top secrets of a mm. successful corporate art commission. You know, if you have been uh, wondering about how that's done, or maybe you are in the middle of it, or you always wanted to do one, we have two great people who can help us out with that today. Uh, we have with us uh, Shirley Williams. She's joining us all the way from Windsor. Ontario in Canada. She's a member of the Art Next Level community as well, part of our program, and we're super excited to have you, to have her. And of course, with us, we have Drew Harris. Drew, you, you know Drew. Uh, him and I, we have spent <laughs> countless hours here <laughs> chatting about all types of things. And of course, we are very excited to have Shirley with us today Absolutely. and uh, talking about this. And the, the story came because, or the idea came to invite Shirley because she recently posted in our community inside the Art Next Level uh, a really beautiful photograph where she's standing on this really large red painting. And uh, Drew knows how much I love red. <laughs> and, yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And Shirley says uh, <clears throat> in that post that uh, she had just, uh, you know, kind of gone to visit one of these paintings, one of the most recent our corporate art commissions. I believe it's seven paintings, large paintings, but like 15 smaller ones. So a huge project. And we're going to discuss some of the learned lessons. And of course, with our good friend, Drew, who also has had many uh, experiences with corporate clients. So I think it's going to be a great <laughs> chat. That's why I called it the top secrets. <laughs> top secrets. <laughs> good okay. to see you both. How are you? Let's, let's start with uh, you, well. Shirley. How are you? Great, great. Glad to be yeah. here. Welcome, Shirley. Thank you. Welcome, fellow Canadian. Yes. Thank Thanks you. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, it's a, it is going to be an exciting thing. And there's a lot of information here that, you know, a lot of people don't know, uh, A, about your work and about the process in doing commission work. Mm -hmm. Commission work is just, uh, it's, it's an animal in itself, you know, uh, it apart from exhibitions and that kind of thing. And Sergio, you say, you know, two of the people that know a lot about commissions. Well, of course, you do as well. So there are three of us here <laughs> yeah. to talk about I think, it. I think we should come up with some top secrets at some point, right? <laughs> yeah. Individual and course, top secrets. Yes. And of course, this will be the beginning of the conversation. We don't know where the rest mm -hmm. of the conversation will lead us, but I'm sure it will be something really, really good. So before we talk about commissions, Shirley, if you can uh, give us a quick introduction into you know, who you are as an artist, mm -hmm. the type of work that you create. Uh, so that our friends who are listening also have a little bit of an idea of what is it that you do as an artist. Okay. Um, well, I've been an artist for 29 years. Um, I started, I moved to Windsor from Toronto uh, in 94 to pursue it, my art as a full-time mm. uh, career. Before that, I was a documentary and film producer. So I had some business background and some visual background, and I had been doing my art uh, degree at night. And, but at this point, I decided to sell my business and do this full time. So I took the plunge and uh, <laughs> I don't know, Windsor seemed to welcome me and I've been doing fine ever since. And um, throughout my career, I've, I've had the real fortune, I guess maybe because of my business background, uh, to be able to get into galleries and do museum shows and, and have my work shown and exhibited and sold uh, all over Canada, the United States. Um, uh, once the pandemic hit, and my work is really, um, it's abstract, um, it's mm -hmm. quite textural, and it focuses on texture and color uh, in a very kind of an organic, um, highly tactile and um, um, sort of energetic way. So um, the, when the pandemic came, I was kind of at a loss because all of my galleries closed and all my income dried up as most mm -hmm. artists had a little bit of problem with that. So I decided at that point that I would carve out 400 square feet from my studio space, mm. which is a warehouse, and uh, create a little boutique art gallery with, uh, you know, open garage glass doors, yeah. and, you know, the whole works, make it really <laughs> good. Uh, because there was really no one in this city that was offering fine art. Mm -hmm. There's no gallery here. There's, there's a, a museum, but that's it. Mm. So, um, that gave me the opportunity to start approaching corporations, individuals, keeping my eye open for projects, that sort of thing. And um, it's actually been a really great thing to have this little gallery yeah. because people used to come to the studio and, you know, they don't know where to look and you don't know, they don't know what's mm. finished and what's not finished and you know the drill. So uh, having this little space has been fabulous, especially for open studios. I can bring in 
corporate clients that can bring in individuals. I, I'm open by appointment and uh, kind of by chance if somebody rings the bell. But it's it's really been freeing for me because now I'm I'm free to either do shows in galleries and exhibitions and also represent myself in a way that is very professional. So uh, yeah. that's kind of where I've come and am now. Well, you speak uh, you speak so eloquently about your your business. You're very succinct mm -hmm. in that. And I think, as you mentioned, you know, you came from a business background in Toronto in 1993. You left that, and I think that's uh, that's something we should also share, all three of us, mm -hmm. coming from a previous business, you know, into something creative is what we do. And I think your uh, your attitude towards your craft your art uh, also has that business aspect, which I think is really imp super important. Super important. You know, my parents yeah. actually did me a favor. I wanted to go to art school. <laughs> and they said, yeah. you're going to have to get a business degree. And, oh, wow. you know, it was really interesting being um, in the film business because as a producer, you're the liaison between the creative people and the right. business people. So you have to speak both languages which has really mm -hmm. helped me because mm. um, I'm not intimidated by business. I can speak their language. And yet at the same time with the gallery and my studio and having kind of proven myself, they also accept what I'm saying and I'm not pushing them. I'm not, yeah. them. you know, it's not a hard sell. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it has helped me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember it wasn't in, in one of the, sessions before this commission that we were inside the art next level i think it was in one of the meetups or something that um or i think back then we were doing them in zoom where where you just had said like well they came to my studio and they wanted everything and we were yeah. like what? you know something like that right it wasn't tell us that story a little bit oh that story i mean to this day it's I don't get it. You know, how did it even happen? But, you know, it's also it's a great story. It's a great, it's, story. We it's all have a great story, but it also shows how you should always never take for granted the people you're talking to. Yes. Because yeah. one of the servers in a restaurant that I like to go to used to talk to me all the time about my art. And mm. one day out of the blue, two years later, she called me and she said, you know, I'd like to come to the gallery and take a look around. Do you mind if I bring my husband? I said, no, no, of course not. Bring him. And so he comes in or they come in and she's talking to me and he's looking around and, you know, not saying too much. Uh -huh. And then I said, oh, is there any one of them that, you know, is your favorite? He said, <laughs> well, I like them all. He said, how much for everything? <laughs> <laughs> so I laughed. Uh, the, the dream meeting. I, yeah, 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 right. Said, that, you probably thought he was joking, right? At the, oh, so, at the beginning. That'll, that'll happen. I'll give you a good price. <laughs> he said, no, no, I'm serious. You know, he said, I'm the senior VP of operations for um, Hub Insurance. We have 60,000 square feet that we're renovating. We're trying to bring our, our, custom, our, um, our employees back. And uh, we want to hmm. create these beautiful place, you know, these beautiful spots in the building for our employees. And we want to have real art. I thought, wow, that's great. So um, one thing and another, and they bought 17 small pieces. They commissioned five very large paintings for their lobby and their executive offices. And they bought two other very large paintings. And they're also talking about now, they were so happy that in uh, the budget for January 2024, they want me to do another one that's going to be a probably 15 feet in panels. So Wow, um, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now so, this this it this is you said it's a Chubb insurance? No, it? uh or, sorry. H U B Hub. Oh eight hub. Oh I okay. So now are they, they in based in um in Windsor? They have uh corporate offices in, in Windsor, but they're international, so they're all over I the see. state as well. Wonderful. So all of these pieces will go into one location or will they go into various well at this point they're in one location. They're yeah, already right. there, right? They're, they're there. Already, they're, yeah, hung, they're, right? they're already they're, hanging. They're finished. well done. Yeah. And, well and I done. think that's the first secret, you know, like you said, never underestimate anyone. You know, the I, I and I talk about this uh, before in our group too, you know, the power, mm. what I call the power of thirds. You meet somebody, but that somebody is just the bridge that will lead you to the person who is Absolutely. going to give you that big opportunity. Absolutely. You know. If I had treated her, you know, because she was always asking about my art and yeah. If I had treated her like a waitress, yeah. like the way some people might, you know, yeah. 
yeah. and said, oh, she'll never right. No one. Right. So yeah, you could, you, you could have taken them to the section where they have the prints or the small drawings, you know, assuming that that's all they That can would be their budget. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Never assume. <laughs> Never assume. Yeah, you see, this is, this is just, uh, I mean, this is a perfect scenario mm -hmm. uh, that we all wish for. You know, the, oh, it's the every dream client and, uh, you know, where you oh. are just trembling in excitement when they say, I'll take them all. And you say... <laughs> Oh no. And then you can't speak and you go all pale and your mouth goes dry and you're not sure what to say. Uh, but we go through it and the success, look, look what happens. Well, there was icing on the cake too. And oh, even was and more, uh, another aha, because as he was talking to me, he said, we have a little problem. And I said, Oh, what's that? He says, it's going to be the budget. I said, well, we can work with that. He said, no, he said, we have to pay you up front because this was in October. He said, we have to spend the money before December. So we'll pay you up front if you don't mind. <laughs> wow. well, that, that's always, that's, this is a really good lead in to something, the little top secrets of the business we do. Uh, oftentimes that can also be a thorn in your side being oh, yeah. paid up front as we all know uh <laughs> yeah. but oh, yeah. as particularly for commissions because you know they they provide the funds you get the funds you spend it on stuff <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes down to actually starting to work and then the demands come right so this is a you know you're very lucky in in all of this situation and clearly they're very happy and they're an easy client and uh, yeah, but it can go wrong too. Go uh, and and especially in the big budgets when you are paid, you know, in full. And but I yeah, it's a law. I think that we all should. We sort of say, okay, I'm not going to take all the money because that kind of jinx some projects. It might, yeah, yeah, I've it, it can. Experience. But I've learned to do it a little bit differently before they give mm. me money. And um, everything is laid out in a 30 page proposal. Um, yeah. You know, the if they make changes or whatever, they, I, I usually have a very good idea. I know exactly the sizes, I know the colors, yeah. I know what they're looking for before I get a dollar, you know, yeah. before I get into doing any mock ups or anything. Um, I've sent them photographs of everything that they've looked at, that they've liked. Yes. Um, all of the business details, the, everything that I could possibly imagine is in there. Delivery, extras, bonuses, discounts, everything is in there. Mm -hmm. so yeah, the details, the yeah. details are so important in these big projects. And that, that really says something to your uh, history as a producer, you know, in the film industry. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you have to have your, you know, I's dotted and T's crossed. Everything has to be laid out and it's visual. So you have to, you know, ensure that we know where that film's going. Uh, you know, with the storyboarding and that kind of thing. So it's a really important lesson, I think, for people that are listening that, you know, you make that extra effort. If you don't know how to do this, you learn how to do it because, exactly. it's, because yeah. it can go, it can go south very quickly. If well, there are a tremendous number yeah. of parallels between what I was doing before and what I was doing now, of because, yeah. um, you know, it's the same thing being the producer because you're the you're the person who is kind of looking after the budget, but also looking after the creative. The creative mm -hmm. people want to do a Cecil B. DeMille movie, and the, the suits they're saying you spent fifty dollars more than you're supposed to. You know, so yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you have to really keep everything in line, and it's a balancing act for me. Um, <clears throat> I've had enough experience, but for somebody new to the corporate commissions, I think you have to be really speak their language, be the one in control. Right. You yeah. have to be in control. You have to tell them what the parameters You're are. You're the expert in the room in that case. You are the yeah. expert. Yeah. And I always approach it that I'm the consultant. Mm -hmm. I'm not just some artist. I'm their consultant. If they don't, you know, agree with, with my work, mm. if they like it, fine. We'll just go somewhere else, right? I'm not mm. going to force myself to try to be something I'm not. But at the same time, I'm helping them create the best art that they could possibly have yeah. for those spaces. Yeah. And I bend over backwards for them. Yeah. I lay it out all in, you know, ahead of time. And I've, I've never really had a problem. 
Mm -hmm. that, Good. that was an individual who turned out to be a little strange, you know. Yeah, like, well, there's yeah, always, I mean, <laughs> always that way. But that, that's a good that's a good success uh, rate, you know. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us, or all three of us, can basically say, you know, I think really from our business background that we've had the success with commissions uh, at a hundred percent or ninety nine point nine percent because we're buttoned down when it comes to, you know, and things do happen sadly. Yeah, <laughs> and right. you get the crazies out there, and you get the people that are haven't expressed themselves properly. And in the end, you know, it's a mix of information that, you know, goes south and no one can seem to get it back. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's when you you either abandon the project and pay them their fees back yeah. or you just, you know, white knuckle it, and go through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and oftentimes, I mean, that's what we do. We, if we're frustrated, we finish the job. And usually, well, in my, in my case, personally, it's always turned out well. Mm -hmm. it's always on their end that, you know, they may have had a change of management or something like that. And someone might not agree with it. Uh, but we've done our job. Yeah, despite and I, the problems. That's yeah. exactly yeah. why doing your homework up front and not mm. just for commissions, but for sales too. You know, right. if, you're, if you're selling something and, and you don't, are you not communicating clearly either when it's going to be delivered or what's extra and what's not extra? Um, right. You know, if you don't communicate that up front, there's going to be some bad feelings along the way. And that, you know, you don't you don't want that. Mm -hmm. So the more you can communicate with them, the more the client, whether it's corporate or individual, feels comfortable. And if they feel yeah. comfortable and they don't feel that you're in, they're not intimidated, they can talk to you about their ideas. Mm. They can say, well, you know, I don't like the direction or I like this better or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You let them feel that they can talk within parameters, right? You got to. Right. Yeah. And then of course. And I think also to just to, to add to that, there has to be some confidence on our side to say, you know, an openness to say that, you know, this is in our case, abstraction uh, and abstraction is not, you know, it's not a paint by number. Mm -hmm. it, there, there's got to be some element of, uh, you know, flexibility for the client. And they have to know that, yes, they might have seen a composite, but it's not going to be exactly the same because paint has its own, you know, livelihood, its own nature. And it will do things magical that we don't expect <laughs> to happen. And right. uh, so, and a lot of people, once you explain that to them, oh, they, yeah. they'll, they'll they're get more it. than willing to say, yeah, I for agree. Sure. Let it, let it Which, flow. But I have a little trick about that too. Mm. Um, All right, let's see. Another top uh, secret. Another <laughs> top secret. Um, for a corporation such as the one I was just working with, I mean, I developed a, a relationship with them very quickly. So I didn't mm. have any problems. Mm -hmm. I felt very confident going in and just doing what they wanted. Yeah. But they were very clear. I was very clear. We had a meeting of the minds. But when I have someone who is just getting one painting, you know, because usually it's just one painting for a mm -hmm. whether it's a corporation or an individual, um, I do too. I create two. Mm. Uh, one that I know is what they thought they wanted. And okay. then the other one, I kind of play around with that idea a bit and yep. get loose and be a little more. <clears throat> a great, and, great idea. And, and, and then I bring them in and let them choose. And it's amazing. You know, they usually take the, my version mm -hmm. and often yep. they'll take both. And mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's a well, double. See, there's there's a good there, that's good business acumen. You know, <laughs> yeah. Provide one and two. <laughs> you well, know. What this does too is it takes away their you know if somebody comes in and you've just created a painting for them, mm. if they don't if they're not in love with it they're they're afraid to say anything. And right. I want yeah, them, I want them to love the painting. Yeah. yeah. So when there's two, it's a game for them. They say, oh. Which one, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. You know, back in the day when I used to do a lot of murals, uh, so, you know, that's a, a commission where I would go, and with the mural, you have to paint it on site. And sometimes mm. it would be a problem because, you know, in the process of making the artwork, the first few layers, they don't look oh. any good, right? Because okay. you're under, yeah. under mm. painting. <laughs> and it's that was always the most, like, difficult part to talk to, to the client to say, it's going to be okay. You know, this is oh. just the underpainting because they would come and they were like, 
oh, this is you know, this is not looking good. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you could read it in their face, uh, and sometimes, particularly if this was their first commission on a wall piece, because uh, you know they imagine that you're painting from one corner to the other, like perfectly finished. That's oh. not how I paint, mm. right? In my process, yeah. I'm all over the place. I'm splashy, dripping here, it's dripping sure. there. And then, you know, I, I bring it together at the end. But, uh, you know, it would take, I know it would take some long conversations sometimes to <laughs> help the person. I think it's all about what you said, you know, having that uh, open dialogue with the client to help yeah. them understand the process in which we work, particularly if you're working on site, you know. That's, uh, that's yeah. one of the things yeah. I always discuss <laughs> with them. I always say, you know, they say, oh, can I come in and, you know, occasionally once see, it. Yeah. see what you're doing? <laughs> and I always say, you know, it's, it's ugly. It's ugly right up <laughs> it's, ugly, yeah. it's going to be ugly. You, you don't want to see it. It's an and ugly baby right now. <laughs> it's a very ugly baby. So I always say you can't come until I call you. And I usually call somebody uh -huh. for a final you know, there could be a little adjustment either way. Yeah. Right? It could be a yeah, little, little darker, a little brighter, a little lighter, just to see what they feel and get their temperature. I usually do that, you know, the last week. And then... Um, so tell me, tell me, uh, I mean, hmm. I know my in my own case, I, I deal with a lot of international. So they're not available to come just drop in. So we rely on, you know, technology to you know, send pictures and standard video and that kind of thing. Now, how do you work with clients when they're not available to be sort of person in person, you know, one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, do you work through a, a process uh, of photographs and video? And Well, yeah, I because if it's here, I like to go to the space. I like to go yes. to the house or their office and I get a feel for the environment. <clears throat> but if it's not, just like you say, you know, we're very fortunate that we live in this world now. We've got video, we've mm -hmm. got Twitter, exactly, we've got photography, and I just, you know, we'll have them zoom around their room and talk, and you know, it becomes a conversation, just like we're having. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not a problem. It's not What's a your problem. percentage for uh, corporate rather and rather to you know personal private commissions? Is there, is there a, do you do more corporate work? Oh, or? what's the percentage? Yeah. Um, about 50, 50. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say about half and half. I don't, I wouldn't say I do a lot, um, but I've always got one on the go, you know, mm -hmm. like, well, that's, that's good. Um, but they last months, you know, I don't paint quickly. So <laughs> uh, sometimes they, yeah, they go. I might do three or four a year, put it that way. Yeah, which brings me to the question, I mean, deadlines. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Let's talk about like, it. A, how do you deal with that? Because oftentimes we're the last thing that comes to mind and they say, oh, yeah, well, everything's in place. Uh, we just need the painting. When? Um, <laughs> can you do it by the, you know, next Tuesday? Yeah. No, <laughs> and you I say, know. you either say yes or no, and most <laughs> of us say yes. <laughs> well, I, I usually um, give myself six to eight weeks from the moment they give me a deposit. And that takes a lot of pressure off me. And you're yeah. right. A lot of them will come and they say, oh, you know, we've, we're having an opening party. And, you know, we of need course. to we have it. Yeah. And I'll just say, well, I can't get it done by then. But, you know, why don't you, you know, borrow some of the paintings in my gallery? We'll fix, we'll, I'll hang them for you. That's a good idea. So then I read them the paintings for uh, two, three weeks and um, they're happy. You know, it's all customer yeah. service, right? I'll do whatever yeah. I yeah. can. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 That's, that's good. Let's talk also about uh, agreements, contracts, agreements, mm. you know, to the importance of having uh, a document that spells out, you know, kind of what you are responsible for, what they are responsible for, deadlines, budgeting, and all that kinds of things, which I, I feel, uh, and, you know, let me know how it works for you too, but, uh, like, when I started, you know, my career, my agreement was, like, this long, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how much I knew, <laughs> just a couple sentences. And then, you know, as you learn, as you go through sometimes difficult situations, you feel, like, oh, I need to also include this or talk to other mm -hmm. artists, include that, and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. I would love to know for you know both of you guys. You know, you're the kind of uh, you're some of the things that you have learned along the way when it comes to uh, uh, 
to contracts and agreements. One, of course, I think we, we talk about, spell out the deadline, super yeah. important when a deadline uh, needs to be done. Number of corrections, do you include like number of corrections or proofs that you may give a client for, particularly for the one that is never pleased? At what point you say, you know, that's, 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 this is it. I think that's a hard, that's one of the hardest ones usually for artists. Uh, do you want to go ahead, Drew? I, please, you're our guest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to, let's Contract. say, if I'm a very oh, yeah. difficult client and and I will <laughs> continue, no, let's make it yellow. No, let's make it green. No, let's make it blue. So, you know, oh. it's like nitty picking and never ending, you know. I uh, one... had one of those people. In yeah, my... yeah. How do you deal with those, particularly in your agreement? I thought I was going to strangle her, but I finally convinced <laughs> her that she liked it. <laughs> but... <laughs> I was but it, yeah, interesting though. Wall. It was just to the point it was ridiculous. But no, I don't um once they've accepted the mock-up and mm. all of the contract and all of the, they've given me their their deposit and we're on a good wavelength and they feel mm. comfortable and I feel comfortable mm. and mm. it's a go. I'll do it as often as they have as they I want them to be happy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, but if they say, oh, we started out yellow, we decided it's going to be red. Well, at that point, it requires conversation. You know, that's yeah. what we yeah. agreed to. Yeah. I'd be happy to make it yellow and paint it again, but there's going to be an additional fee. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I think uh, I think yeah, when you're dealing with the, with the corporate or even private, and most, most people are smart enough to know that, you know, you don't order a car and then... Yeah. You know, as it's being shipped to you, you say, you know what? I think maybe I only want half of it red. Yeah. You know, you yeah. go, well, <laughs> clearly <laughs> there's going to be some negotiation there. And that, that comes down to us being stronger. I know a lot of artists will say, okay, I'll change it. And they keep changing it. And yeah. then the painting yeah. becomes yeah. muddied and everybody kind, kind of gets Nobody's angry happy. or, or yeah, right. <clears throat> the right. impatience level just goes through the roof. Although I'm, you know, I think we always, we always rectify those problems in the end, but it, the process can be painful. Uh, the mm -hmm. contracts, and if, contracts are individual too. I mean, mm -hmm. some people are just, they are not going to sit and really, uh, you know, ponder over a long lengthy contract. And they're the type of people that really are not going to be the type to nitpick something to death, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you just give them the basics of the contract. Here's what you're going to get, roughly. Uh, here's when you're going to get it. Here's the price. And this is what you have to provide me. You know, fees up front, uh, time, schedule, shipping, and address. Mm -hmm. And you handle the rest. Yep. <laughs> and that's it. It all boils <laughs> down to communication. I mean, yeah, of course. Um, yeah. I think, unfortunately, a lot of artists, um, even professional artists are afraid to do commissions because it's kind of hard to make yourself, you have to put yourself in a position where you're almost split personality. You know, you're mm. the salesperson, but you're also the artist. Mm -hmm. And a lot of artists can't separate their ego. You have to let your ego completely yeah. go sideways. You True. It's nothing to do with ego. So yeah. if anybody doesn't like that painting and they want something closer to that one you can't get upset i mean it's personal preference so you have to get rid of your ego you have to work with them you have to talk to them as if you're a gallery owner almost at some point yeah. and then yeah. you put your artist hat on and you go and do your job right so it's true it's it's a funny you know you're walking a line a very fine line very much mm -hmm. yeah well Sergio, so what do you think no, that's good. Some, I was going to say some of my favorite um, uh, clients that I've had is I have done some projects for colleges and universities, yeah. uh, commission work. And uh, what I love about those, and that's why kind of I, I was seeking more of those for a while, is because they typically they had their account for art. The art department had their supplies account. So I could mm. charge separate for the materials versus the actual painting oh. of the project. So they would say, okay, give me the list of everything you want. So I would do my my whole list. And of course, you know, if you're just going to need just one like dip of yellow, list. you order a whole yellow, right? A whole <laughs> yellow uh, paint <laughs> of paint. So those those projects usually would, would pay my, 
you know, all my materials for the entire year in my studio because uh, yeah, every time sure. I did one, it was like a whole set of of colors because you have to, you know, you have to order the whole the whole set. So it was great because they, you know, they had like their their uh, art department order the material because they would get a discount anyway. Yeah, of course. And then I would charge separate for the painting. So those were like my. Would that reduce your price? Like no, for the no. I mean, art, that, you would still keep it. I at, would still, at the yeah. Level I mean, I, I would, pricing. I would reduce a little bit. Of course, you know the um, the amount for the material. It will mm. not be added to the actual work that it would take me to make the artwork. But, but you know, uh, the nice thing about it is that, like you said, you make your wish list. You know, oh, yes. I, I even like colors that I, I might use it. But it looks really nice. That you know, metallic. <laughs> Gold. Let's give that a try. <laughs> That's going to be the multicolor paintings. <laughs> and you know that this is a great part of the conversation as far as a business perspective goes as well. This is called inventory, right? You yeah. keep your inventory. You you stock your inventory through commissions for those projects, yeah. And uh, so you, you you can actually the more commissions you do, really essentially the more money you make because mm -hmm. you're not having to reinvest in materials you know, all the essential materials that you need to do commissions. So with one commission, you've bought the materials like you do. And then the second commission, well, you've got a lot of those materials. So you can reduce the cost of, mm -hmm. of your materials and increase your cost of, or in increase your income uh, or profit. Through, I mean, you, do you, <clears throat> your proposals, do you, and, and also Sergio, do you cost out your materials in the proposal? No. Not generally, not for the client, because the client doesn't care. They yeah. just want the finished product. Right. So, okay. I misunderstood. Uh, yeah, like in in our case, in my case, I mean, it, because I'm doing international stuff, and often big corporate stuff, like it's not like yourself. I mean, doing fairly large work, but a lot of my commissions are, are exceptionally large, and that means then having to rent a studio. Uh, a, an extra space to, I can't do it in my own studio and that is costs incurred that's always indicated but I, I don't have to go into a specific number right but they know yeah. that when they hire me they know that I have limitations so I have to they have to pay for those limitations in a way if they want that bigger piece mm -hmm. um, uh, studio costs or uh, transportation costs you know, it's going to be more expensive to send a, you know, eight foot rolled painting in a tube to China or to Macau, you know, or wherever, um, than it is to be send it, you know, a two foot painting. Yeah. Yeah. Because the courier companies are, have, you know, stipulations. So these are all the co costs that we have to, we put in, we make a very, make them very aware that you know, in that final prize that you're paying for this commission work, these are the parameters, you know, right. and I think uh, most clients, uh, they understand mm -hmm. and, and they really don't want to know, you know, how much per liter of paint is, no. you know, they just have to know that. I want the painting. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the best products. And yeah. that's another thing we always tell that I always tell my clients is that they get the best results because I they too. use the best products. So they'll say, well, that's, that's expensive. You know, your, your painting's expensive. Well, you know what? I use good quality materials and I have <laughs> to order those things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I use those in your painting. Sure. I mean, so I can use cheap, but uh, you're not going to be happy with it. I'm not going to be happy with it. And you're going to pay maybe a little bit less, but you're not ever going to be happy with the painting. So mm -hmm. Very go true. for that extra quality. Right. And that comes through everything. The shipping, <clears throat> the reinstallation, the teams that you hire to actually put it up in wherever it's going. Uh, you pay for that stuff. Absolutely. And you pay for a good you know, the guy with a ladder and a you know tape measure is <clears throat> long gone. Now you've got teams of people that go in and you know with laser levels and the whole, you know, they're professional. So yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I always stress that too, you know, that everything is going to be 
kid gloves. It's all archival. It's all the very best. I mean, yeah. you know, example, <clears throat> modeling paste, you know, if you're buying golden and it's $180 a gallon and versus yeah. the, the hardware store and buying, I don't know, goop for 50, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. that's going to fall off the canvas in three months. And that's what, yeah. unfortunately, what a lot of artists are doing now. You see all over YouTube, you know, just buy garbage oh it's a it's a it's a it's a nightmare it is it's it's falling off and you know it, people it happened to my first mural you know when i, I was actually a student and uh so you know a guy asked me if i you know if i could paint a mural for his business i said yeah sure i had never painted one in my life before i got the wrong paint and uh it, it was it, it you know it was yeah oil and um it was like too drippy so, you know, because I, I was working on a smooth surface, not on canvas. I had never worked on a on a wall, mm. uh, indoor, not a, not outdoor. So, it, you know, it took me like three times longer to finish it because I it looked like I was just working like super slow, you know. <laughs> but I had no choice. So. That's how we learn. That's how we yes. learn. That's and because I wanted to, the, 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 I say it because I wanted to save some money, and I went for the cheaper material and. Very quickly, I learned you cannot cut corners, you know, when you do something like this. You can't. No, very I true. Have a question <clears throat> for one of our <clears throat> secrets. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, can you, either of you, tell me when you work with interior designers or architects on a on a commission, and they want their twenty percent? And oh boy, yeah, I know where so this question is going. And you're doing <laughs> um, something, you know, a big project, and and the company they deserve a, a discount too because they're buying several pieces. And then there's nothing left for you. <laughs> How do you work with that? <laughs> yeah, you I know. say no, or you do. You know, I mean, you that's that's you as simple as that. You have to add. Well, it. you know, I, I okay. I'm going to let Sergio go ahead, but I have okay. a very strong opinion on this, and 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 it's things that people get disappointed and, uh, with because it's not painting for a gallery. You're not painting an exhibition. You're painting yeah. a commissioned work. There's parameters around it. And you have to, you want the work, you have to abide by the rules. And there seems to be sort of this unwritten rule. You're not going to be paid what you're normally paid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in my, yeah, in my opinion, uh, when I have done that too, is that the artist, you know, ahead of time that this is going to happen. Yeah. So you have to agree with it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and in my opinion, in the art world, everybody who's involved deserves a cut. You know, just like when my gallery, yeah. you know, facilitates a deal for another one, you know, to somebody to buy something or when we bring in a designer or something like that, it's part of how it is, you know. Yes. And uh, yeah, that's why a, in, in, yeah, that's why in yeah. some projects uh, you lose, but then in some projects you gain more than you expected to. So it, at the end of the yeah. day, it kind of balances things out. I don't think it's ever really a loss. I mean, you've got that. No, I'm, exactly. Loss. Right. Um, True. You know, just like prestige, if you're, there's a there's an element of prestige yeah. when you yeah. when and you have to balance that out. You know, if you've got a, a you know hotel that you know, tens of millions of people are going to see it over over the next five years. You know, you take your you know you weigh that out against uh, the the money that you know going to be spent within a few months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, and the way I look at it is, I mean, your time is is in the studio anyway you might as well be making right. you know 25 percent rather than 80 percent. you know it's... yeah there it's a funny th it's but it is it, it is disappointing and yeah. you know people unless you are really established in the world and you are like a very sought out after you know, commercial or corporate artist people are doing you know large installation work and that kind of thing uh you know there those are few and far between yeah a lot of what we do now and our bread and butter are people, designers that are coming to us as the third person uh, or the middle person to, a, you know, a boutique hotel in Guangzhou or, or in, you know, Windsor. There's a little boutique hotel, but it needs a designer. It's got a designer designing it. And they put all their effort into, the, you know, the comfortable beds. And, <laughs> and in the end, they come to us and they say, Mm, we need something visual on the wall, but we don't have much of a budget. And you it's think, okay, spent. well, <laughs> yeah, it's already spent. <laughs> yeah. And, but you know what? You weigh that out 
A, for how much time and effort you're going to put into it. Is it a good client? And what kind of exposure is, are you going to get? And, you know, that one client can turn out to, you know, a number of projects over oh, your oh, yeah. artistic lifestyle, uh, lifetime, you know? So, yeah, do we do we say no and risk I never that? Say no, unless I know the person is not for me, you know, unless yeah. they yeah. don't like what I do or they want something yeah. totally off base. Um, I, I never say no. If, you know, if it's, a, if it's a, someone who's coming to me directly because they like my work, I mm. would never say no. Now, always- do they, have, they, have they ever thrown this ball at you? Uh, you know, they'll say, okay, we really love your work. But we also really like this artist's work, too. Can you do what they do? Yeah. Your work? <laughs> okay, go to them. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> usually they cannot afford that one. That's why they well, have then your company. <laughs> it's usually a Picasso or something. Yes, exactly. You, go, well, you no. know what? I, Sorry, I'm not sure I can do it. No, I never do that. No. I always, it's my work. It, it yes. was, the way that I begin uh, is that I have them, if, they, if they're familiar with my work, or not familiar with my work, one or the other. I have them go through a photo album. Photos is better than yes, a, yeah. a screen. I have them go through a photo album of uh, previous work, going back right. years that I have. Mm. And I've got them all printed on, on photo paper, eight, eight and a half, eleven. So it's a nice binder presentation. And as we go through, um, you know, I have them pull out the ones that they like, and we have a pile. Then we look at that pile and we say, okay, what about these do you like? Mm. On second thought, is there any you, you want to reject? And we, we nail it down to kind of a stock. Because, you know, we all have the same style over the yes. But things change. So somebody might like one more bright or more subdued. So this is, I get them kind of into it themselves until they yeah. get to a point yeah. where they kind of really know themselves what they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's right. when you, is that when you uh, start your process of, you know, pre- preparing a composite? Show them? Um, no, I do that before, actually. I do that before we, I get into a presentation. Mm. They approach me, they want something. I'll say, well, what did you have in mind? I usually do, if it's local, I'll do a walkthrough. Um, sizes, colors, what did you have in mind? So at that point, I'll say, well, let's uh, have you come over to the studio, take a look what I do, look through the binder. Yeah. An idea. And sometimes they actually buy something that's here, and it turns out not to be a commission, which is great. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and so at that point, we know what we're going, we're going to do. I know the sizes. Um, I've already roughly discussed the budget. I've roughly discussed the parameters. I've kind of verbally gone over everything and they're getting excited. And then I say, okay, I think I'll put this all in paper for you and still a go, I'm going to need a deposit and it's going to be 68 weeks and here's what's going to happen. And then the next visit after that, I see them with the mock-ups. I know where I'm going. They sign off and I begin. That's good. That's good. Yeah, good you see, mm-hmm. uh, people listening to this, and and you know, here's the woman to go to. You want a commission? <laughs> the place to go. go to right here. <laughs> yeah, you know, <clears throat> and there's, I mean, uh, that you know, as fun as that is, when I say it, it is important. You know, knowing that you, these these corporations they have they have strict budgets, and mm-hmm. they have they have a they have a process they have to work towards. They don't want some flaky artist that says, "Oh, sure, I can do that," and then yeah. mm-hmm. you know don't find that you know uh, actually I'm I'm off in Ibiza right now, uh, traveling. I can't do it right now, but I might be able to do it. Now. You know, you go no, you know, we're running a business here. Mm-hmm. Can you provide your service? You're essentially your service uh, to the interior design world. One of the things that I do, which is really helpful moving forward, Mm. is when a client is happy, you know, they just, oh, I love it. It looks so great, you know, in the room, whatever. Mm. I always say, can you put that in writing for me? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, get get a testimonial, yeah. Yeah, of course. Testimonial for, you know, to help me out. Yeah. 
And so I also have a binder that in goes, that all goes into the next presentation for the next company. So mm-hmm. it, it's already pre-sold, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of yeah. their mind, they know I'm not flaky. I'm not going to let them down. You know, I'm going to work with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think just in, you know, look at this conversation we're having, it's very clear that you know what you're doing and to a, to a corporate client that have an assumption of what artists are like, to deal <laughs> yeah. with, you might be actually a pleasant surprise for them because they're, you are talking their language. And mm-hmm. that's a really mm-hmm. important part. You have yeah. to wear the two hats. Like you said, uh, you know, if you can't, you can't be flaky in these, these situations, uh, it, no. you know, there are deadlines and there are expectations and you have to finish mm-hmm. the work. And there are frustrations, you know, we've all <clears throat> had it. I've, I've been to the point where I've just almost given back the commission money and said, forget it, I'm not doing your project because you guys can't seem to agree on what you want mm-hmm. and you're making changes. So <clears throat> they that say, oh, well, I thought you were an artist. You can just do whatever we <laughs> sort of say. And I go, well, no. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's complicated when you're working with a committee. Mm. That's true. If it's you like have cats, more of, more people, yeah. people yeah. that have to make a decision, um, it's important, like totally super important, right from the beginning, that it's really clear who's in charge, who's yes. going to make the final decision. Yeah. Who is making the choices? You know, the colors, the sizes. Who is the person? that I'm talking to. That's another top secret yeah. right there. Yeah. It is. You know? Yeah. There's one, yeah. one person that will, that will give the go ahead that does the sign off mm-hmm. that takes responsibility for the whole project. Oh yeah. That's true. And sometimes, and that's complicated sometimes because nobody wants to tell you at the beginning. <laughs> you really have to play the Who's going to take on that? Yeah. It's political. Yeah. Sometimes, you you know, know, I've worked with, uh, with, uh, agencies, uh, and where a lot of these uh, interior design companies are headed up by pretty serious uh, designers, they're older generation. They come to me because they they like what they see. We're of, of the same age, but oftentimes they're below them. There is a young designer, and mm. this is one of the m- major problems that we've had in the past where the young designer doesn't want to make decisions for someone that's, you know, very busy and often out of the office, you have this liaison, this liaison that is really not quite sure about what, whether to give the go ahead and approvals on certain things. So they'll say, you know, yeah, I think that's okay. And you go, what you think? Okay. (laughs) Well, can you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to do anything until I know for certain. And they'll say, okay, well, just go ahead. I'll say, no, why don't you get it in writing and show what I we just talked about to your boss. And then I need that boss to sign off on it. Because otherwise, what you believe and what the boss believes may not be. Th- in that case, you know, I've had situations where I've, I've gone absolutely bananas walk, working with a young designer and he was a good designer, but he couldn't make up his mind because he was thrown into a position of, you know, had to act on behalf of the company, Hmm. but the ultimate approvals were by someone, his senior, Mm -hmm. you know, and I finally ended up just saying, talking to the senior partner and saying, you know what? I can't work with this young designer. I'm sorry. You're wasting my time. You know, and that was a, that was a commission that was forty feet in length, wow. by wow, ten big. feet in height, and it was that's not an easy project to work on. Oh, mm-hmm. And then when you know you do the whole thing based on what they say, and then he says, "Well, actually, I don't, I don't think we should use yellow. I think we should go green." <laughs> and you go, what? what? The whole painting is yellow now. <laughs> you just told me to paint it yellow. Yeah. And I went in a yellow tone. Uh, and you now you're saying paint it in green. Green. Yeah, what I do with interior designers, uh, <laughs> and I don't work with them as often as maybe you do, uh, Drew, because 
I have run into issues where, you know, like you yeah. said, but what, when I do get a, an architect or a designer that wants to work with me, I always ask them to meet the client. Um, yeah. I want to see the space and I want to meet the designer or the, the client. And I know that they're read the energy. <laughs> yeah. I want to read the energy and I want to really know because it's the client, not the designer who's in charge. It's not the designer yeah. who makes the decision. It's the client who's going to live with it. <laughs> so I will work with the designer directly, but I want to know that what they're telling me is the correct interpretation of what the client wants. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. That's good. The, client, the, client, the client doesn't know either. They don't know what they want. They're just saying, oh, yeah. well, whatever the designer tells me. Yeah. But they're, they're, again, I try to clear, clear the space. Like who's, who's telling me what, and I want to know before I start, what, mm -hmm. what's yeah. the story? What's the real story? There are that. situations yeah. that I know we've all been through this and I, and I always reference this one to, to people that I work with and new clients and even people that I talk to about commissions. You know, I did a commission, uh, through, uh, through a design company an interior design company. And, uh, I provided all the composites and then uh, provided, uh, you know, applications, times, deadlines, uh, shipping things, what they're going to have to do on their end to get it up, you know, and, and on the walls. And these were, these were eight different paintings. I had to sort of copy some of my older paintings, which is what was okay with me. They were my paintings. Mm -hmm. I did all of that. I did it to the T. I did this commission to the T. I did video. I posted things online. It was fantastic. And about after I got them to the client, uh, I was paid. And I asked the client, the middle person, oh, mm -hmm. did you ever get photos of the final installation? Oh, no. The owner of the property didn't like the paintings. And I said, why not? He said, well, he was never informed by his subordinate. Oh, wow. So oh. I said, so where do the paintings go? He said, in a storage. And I spent, you know, I spent two and a half months of my life creating mm -hmm. these things and documenting every process and approvals. Mm -hmm. And yet it goes into wow. storage. Oh. Wow. So <clears throat> I, I use it as an example now. And the paintings were, were exceptional because I really put an effort to do exactly what they told me to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. And it was a disappointment because it was a really good corporate client. But yeah. in the end, it came down to one one guy, the chairman, saying, don't like it. Don't want that in my office. Go put it in a storage. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and, and on the other side, let's talk about also about the rewards of uh, once the piece mm. is complete, it's hanging on a wall. You come back later, maybe a few days later, a year later, or two years later. And the feeling of seeing your work on a wall. Amazing you know, uh, on a public space or a corporate space. Let's talk a little bit about that because I think that's important too. You know, it, it's as, yeah. as artists, we always talk about, you know, the, the hustle and the bustle that happens in the studio, but those projects that go successful and you go back, they, I find that they, they bring me back in time. You know, yeah. whenever I, I see I had that experience this idea. week. Um, Tell us about it. Yeah. This particular yeah. project that we just talked about, this big one, um, I'd been working on it for a long time with this client for about four months. And by the time they were delivered and installed and I saw them on the wall the first time I thought, Oh, you know, yeah. there, I could see the flaws. <laughs> uh, I thought, Oh, I could have done this different. I yeah, should yeah. have would have, you know, it's like too much. <laughs> yeah. And I, I bit my tongue and they were really happy, but in my, in my heart, I was thinking, Oh, it could have been better. Uh -huh. So that was uh, four months ago. And then yesterday or the day before, um, I went over to take some pictures. I hadn't seen them in that length of time. Uh -huh. And I walked in in the lobby and it was, I almost had tears in my eyes because it was like I was seeing them for the first time. Yeah. 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 God, they're so powerful. And um, they need time to settle in. The paintings do. need time to sort of yeah. blend with their environment, I think. And I needed to settle. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. Because a painting has a life 
and when you've been working on it for so long, it yeah, it just overpowers you. You know, you yeah. you like I said, you can see the flaws. You keep wanting to add another layer, or do something else yeah. to it. <laughs> and a lot of times they're not really flaws; they're just kind of like our Things own. You would do different. Yeah, what would we have done differently? You know. Yeah. And that's why when we look at them again with fresh eyes, you know, it, it's a whole new experience. Yeah. And My it was wife great because is... I, I walked into the lobby and the uh -huh. receptionist behind the counter, you know, they said, oh, you're the artist? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah. Uh -huh. We get so many compliments on those. People love them. And it just, oh, that's good. Yeah. you think, oh, it was all worth it. You yeah. know, it's, yes, it's worth it. Th there you go. There, there's the ultimate. That's the ultimate saying, you know, it was all worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember, well, my wife travels a lot for her school for the university taking her students on you know exchange programs and they go off to japan or wherever it's usually south asia and a lot of my clientele are south asian but i i have done so many commissions for hotels and and big you know big corporate guys but i never seem to get the photographs the proper <laughs> photographs yeah it's usually from the designer that you know has taken the picture of the art on the wall but all the wrapping is next to it. Uh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you're like, can you not move the wrapping and just taking a picture of the art? Then it, well, of course, now, but, uh, you know, it's little things like that. I never seem to get the pictures. It's another thing you add into your contract is photograph uh, documentation, final photographs done by someone professionally on their end, you know, oh, I've never so asked that you that. have it. Yeah, I put it in because a lot of designers, once they finish their project and all the glad handing is done and, you know, the ribbons have been cut and the place gets open, they never go back to shoot them. Hmm. So uh, so my wife, when she travels, it, she makes it her mission to go out find and them. find places. And you've probably seen on my a couple of my yeah. posts where she's walking through, I think, I think it's the fourth season or... And the Mandarin Oriental in Guangzhou, it was one of my best projects ever. And I'd never seen pictures of it. Oh. And she walked through it with a video. And they took, they led her through each of the paintings. Mm -hmm. And it was a uh, and it was heartwarming. It was like, mm -hmm. oh my God. You got to see them there with the sound of the hotel going and everything Feels else. Great. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Japan, the same thing. You know, I know I'd put paintings there, but uh, I kept referring to them, but I'd never seen them. And she wow. was there, and again, wow. in a hotel, executive level, and she went up and took pictures of it. That's great. And, and <laughs> brought it home, and I was like, wow, they still look great. They, yeah. <laughs> and Sergio, I had to thank you, because I did something on this project I had never yeah. done before. Um, oh, okay, tell us about it. Uh, and it, and they're really, I think it's going to, you know, like they really are happy about it. And that was, I offered in the, um, uh, instead of giving them extra discount, because, you mm -hmm. know, they all wanted the discount and I did the proposal. Uh, I said that I would, uh, create a catalog of their collection mm. Okay. and offered and, and, um, I supplied them with eight, uh, full catalogs. Okay. Nice. You can put in their executive suites and in their lobby and nice. yeah. Yeah. chairman and all this stuff. So they're really excited about that. And that's to me, that's like, yeah, it's going to cost me some money yeah. and time, but it's free advertising. Yeah, exactly. Were these, were these printed uh, like booklets or books? I haven't done it yet because they're not quite oh. finished. They still want that big one in January. Mm. Mm -hmm. So when they, when it's done, will you produce like a hardcover, you know, one of these uh, photo books where it's it shows no, like a print on demand. Uh, yeah, print yeah. on demand, like blurb or something yeah. like that. You know, yeah, I will give you a beautiful great. catalog. Mm -hmm. I think they're about it's a great $2 idea dollars or something to print mm -hmm. one. Yeah, so, you know, even if I sent, you know, I sent them ten, uh, you know, that's maybe two hundred and fifty dollars. It's cheap advertising right something that i that's Never. that's wonderful that's a great idea another thing that i have done as you were talking about that that i just remembered with a couple of clients i did um and i gave him the idea i said you know once the piece was finished so why don't you and uh you know um i can help you design a thank you card you know on behalf of your business mm -hmm. so when you need to they give thank you cards to you know to client your clients 
with the cover being one of the paintings. So all I ask is that in the back you put, you know, my name uh, Great idea. as the artist. That's and a, a couple, idea. and a couple they did. You know, one of them sent it for their uh, like uh, some sort of anniversary something that they sent mm. to people who came. And uh, so yeah, you know, that was like free yeah. advertising. All I had to do is give them the idea and give them the permission to. I didn't get anything paid for it. But I, it doesn't matter, you know. It was like yeah. a way to get the word out. Uh, all I ask is, is just my name be on it, and that's it. The other thing I do too, which again yeah. is free advert, well, not free, but very inexpensive yeah. advertising, is I supply them with name plaques. Ah, that is good. So that's a good I, idea too. My name, yeah. you know, like on a, on a just a very yeah. discreet silver plate. You know, you nice. can get them done mm -hmm. with my name, the name of the painting the copyright and all of that and they love that yeah, yeah. because uh, oftentimes they're asked the receptionist is asked you know who did that the What's the name of it? yeah and they should go i don't know i don't know the name of it i got here after you know and <laughs> yes. they go right okay <laughs> yeah but it's a good idea that's a really good uh and, you know you get a name plaque catalog dollars and yeah. the name is out there forever that yeah, is good. you know, th these are two really good ideas that, and, and th these create good customer service. Mm -hmm. you now, uh, you know, we can promote their product all, all you want, uh, you know, on our social media and that kind of thing. But I think these are the little incentives that will keep a client happy. And clearly that this, this client that from Hub, you know, one of your clients is coming back and, and will probably continue to come back and refer you to other clients. Exactly. And, this, and it's all because of the little name tag, the possible book, uh, the customer yeah. service, because they have the product now. They're very proud of it. But you just keep adding to that. It's like these are these are really important key factors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Super. Well, I think uh, we have covered a lot of top secrets <laughs> there, uh, you know, some add-ons. So believe it or not, we've been low. I did just about for an hour or so. Wow, you know, I, th went I, th fast. I know. I think we have given our friends well, a, lot of, yeah, a lot of really good uh, insights, a lot of really good things to think about, you know, for mm -hmm. everyone, you know, all of us. I think uh, we all learn from each other. I learned from Drew, from Shirley, and, you know, we all learn from each other uh, in these conversations, which is great. But I have one more question to ask you, Shirley. It has nothing to do with with corporate clients, but rather with you as an artist. You know, how did you find the art next level? And, uh, you know, yeah. why, why did you decide to, uh, you know, to come with us uh, to join our community? Well, you know, when I started out, um, there was no internet and there were no, I mean, and believe it or not, um, I'm old enough to say that it was considered really bad form to be representing yourself or trying to sell your own work in those yeah. days. So I was kind of wow. like a unicorn, you know, like, you know, business and you know, art, like you're not supposed to know business. <laughs> right. So, uh, I learned kind of through hard trial and error. And, you know, sometimes I think like, okay, maybe I should try this or I should try that. But is that really the way to do it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I spent an awful lot of time going down this road and that road and trying mm -hmm. to do this course and that course. And there's an awful lot of fluff on the internet that, you know, mm -hmm. you just, it's not professional. It's sell your art, you know, five yeah. hours worth of art a day and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I joined because of two things. I wanted to um, create conversations and get to know more professional artists that were really professional, not mm -hmm. just playing at it. And you are and, very good at that, by the way. What's that? I, conversations. Oh, yeah. Conversations and communication. Oh, absolutely. I think you are a key, one of our key, one of Sergio's oh, key members. Oh, yeah. Well, because cool. you you understand the value of communication. That's yeah. It. And I wanted that, that kind of um, uh, networking, you know, and learning. And I, believe it or not, I mean, yes, uh, somebody might think I know everything after all these years, but no, I don't. Because I have learned so much from all of you. Um, just you know, little tidbits here and there, a um, little professional tip, a little mm. something here and there. And uh, actually, the um, series you just did recently about uh, creating a body of work, mm -hmm. I had freshened up my thinking about mm. that in a long time. Good. So, you know, it was really good to go through that whole program uh, with fresh eyes, almost like mm -hmm. a beginner's mind. Yeah. And say, okay, maybe I need to look at this again. 
And so I've been really learning and I've been enjoying and I've been just having a great time. And yeah. I really appreciate what you guys do. Thank you. And right, I, I know I can yeah. speak on behalf of maybe of Sergio, you know, what you guys, what, what the members do, you know, yeah. uh, and they, they make little suggestions. They make, you know, little successes and failures and things like that, that they post and we share. Uh, and then Sergio, you know, goes, Bingo. Hey, we got to talk about that. <laughs> right. I'll say, yeah, that's a good yeah. thing to talk about. <laughs> and sure. the next thing you know, we've got a whole month long session and, you know, it, it inspires you guys really inspire Sergio. Yeah. I hope I do too. But, Andrew. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm and, learning you know, the internet through you guys. Cause that was my <laughs> biggest bugaboo. How do I, you know, get her, get through and, and promote yeah. myself on the internet. So that was really one thing that I've learned a lot from you. And, yeah. and I'm Wonderful. just enjoying the whole, the whole, um, I don't know what you would call it. And, uh, Camaraderie and yeah. The, the community. Community. Yeah. 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 Now we, we, yeah, and we appreciate you, Shirley, uh, in the community. And, Thank you. you know, it's, uh, it's wonderful. That's one of the wonderful things about it. We have artists at all levels, you know, artists yeah. as experienced as you are. And yeah. then artists who, you know, you're starting their career and we all learn from each other, right? We all yeah. uh, can can pick something from somebody that, hmm, I never thought about it that way. Well, and then yeah. just go from there. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. it's so valuable because if I had had something like you guys when I was starting out, yeah. Uh, I would have saved 25 years on my career. <laughs> I think we all would have as well. I, I wouldn't look the way I do now. Oh. <laughs> yes. For sure, for sure. I might have hair like you. <laughs> well, at, at one point it was all black, but I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> all those bad commissions. Looks good now. <laughs> well, well uh, you know, I, I think you uh, I think this has been a really valuable yeah, it's uh, been session. Great. Uh, yeah. You brought up some really, really serious, solid points. And I, mm -hmm. you know, we, we can't stress it enough, the mm -hmm. business side of, uh, of our careers. You know, Absolutely. we need to do it. We need to be mm -hmm. business people. And uh, we learn from each other. And yeah. you sure have taught me a few things. I oh, love the little name tag thing. I think yeah, that's you go. Thank fantastic. You. That's mm -hmm. the cheapest form of ad. For I hadn't even thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, Shirley, for all our friends who would like to follow up after this podcast and know a little bit more about your work, follow you on Instagram. Could you please uh, share where they can find you both on social media and online? Sure. Um, I'm on all the social platforms, um, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, you got it. Uh, and I've got a website, where, which is basically a portfolio site, shirleywilliamsart.com. And uh, anyone is free to go there or call me or contact me, email anytime. And for your Excellent. social media is Shirley Williams Art. Art, right? Yeah. On all of them. Perfect. Wonderful. Super easy. Well, there you go, friends. Do us a big favor if you listen to this podcast, if you learn something new, if it inspires you, uh, please do well. Actually, do two things. One, click on the little share button on your screen or in your device. If you're listening to the podcast, please share it with all, with all of your friends as well, because we can all learn from each other. And then, of course, go and follow uh, Shirley. Uh, contact her as well. If you have any further questions, let her know that you listen here to the podcast. So I want to thank you both of you for joining today. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you. It's been such a great conversation. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, Shirley. This is your home, too. Anytime you want to join us again, just come right over. <laughs> yeah. And always encouraging new ideas. And this, Absolutely. Is, uh, this is part of, you know, why I get excited, you know, helping this guy out. <laughs> uh, as little as I do, he, he drives the whole machine. I just, I'm just following along behind him. No, you no, he, and, huh? you make a good team. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm very proud of, of my association with these guys. Uh, but I, you know, they're they're driving, they're driving it. So yeah, it's so it's all good. It's all good. When one yeah. of us wins, we all win, right? So that's that's right. Motto. So yeah. thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Uh, have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you at the next level. Bye, guys. Bye.